Tom Farkson, PJ number 0151620. Right, so I'm here today to talk about the bunker shot, how it's played, where it's played, that sort of thing. Um, first things first, we use a lob wedge. We use a lob wedge or a club with a bit of loft on it to try and get that ball over a lip in front of us. We need a high trajectory on the shot, so a club with the most amount of loft we've got is ideal. It's going to be a pretty straight directional shot, minimal curvature, um, high trajectory, like I said, because we need to get that, that ball over that lip. A bunker shot is only really played in a sand trap like this. You've missed the green with your approach shot, you've landed in one of these. We need to get it out and as close to the hole as we possibly can. So first things first, we're actually doing the bunker shot. It's face aim. We want that face open to the target to increase dynamic loft and therefore get that ball, like I said, launching on a nice high trajectory as high as we possibly can. What we need to do is make sure that once we actually have applied the club to the ball, that the ball is still lined up at the middle of the face. What we can do, if we get there and then I open the face, I'm losing that center of the strike. That ball is now lined up, now lined up out of the heel. I need to make sure I open the face, then apply the club down, so the ball position is the ball, sorry, is still in the centre of the face. When we get back to impact, that gives us the best chance of actually striking out of the middle of the face and not out of the heel. Uh, hold. We're on a fairly neutral hold, so what we do, we can keep that increased dynamic loft. If I sort of get a bit of a weaker, a bit of a strong, strong grip either way, we're going to lose that dynamic loft at impact. What I want to do is get that nice neutral grip, so I'm keeping that open face, keeping that dynamic loft high keeping it increased, so therefore that ball is going to launch nice in the air. If I want to grip down a little bit further down the club, that's going to lower that club head speed, bit of a shorter swing, and that's make sure that bunker shot is then going to go a little bit shorter. If I want to increase the length of that bunker shot, I'll go a bit higher up the club, increase the club head speed, get another lever involved, increase the club head speed, increase the length of the shot, that bunker shot is then going to go further. Ball position. Ball position needs to be slightly forward to centre, like so, what that's going to do is going to try and get us into that nice descending angle of approach, promoting that sand first strike and making sure again that ball pops out. If we put the ball about two inches forward of centre, what we're going to do, the club is going to strike the ball in the middle of our stance, it's going to strike the, sh the sand in the middle, and therefore it's going to go through the sand and up and hit the ball a couple of inches in front, and therefore get that ball launching high again. Um, ball, sorry, back to ball positions again with a centerness of strike. Um, ball position needs to be where it is to try and get that centerness of strike out in the middle. If we get a little bit too far back, too far forward, we're going to lose the centerness of strike compared to the height on the face. So a couple of inches in front is going to mean that our ball is lined up out of the middle of the club and when it gets back to impact, it's still going to be in the middle of the club. We're going to get that perfect centerness of strike. Uh, stance and posture. So we've got a slightly narrower stance. Okay, it's not a massive swing, so a slightly narrower stance with a little bit of control. And what that's going to do is enable us to control the length of swing uh, and therefore the club head speed so we can control exactly how hard and how how hard the shots how hard we're going to hit the shot and how far it's going to fly we want our weight 60 percent on that left hand side to again promote that descending angle of approach make sure we get that sand first strike and get through the sand into the ball shoulders need to be parallel with the target with my left foot and left hip withdrawn slightly to clear myself now what that's going to do a path is going to be out to into the target because we've just moved ourselves left the reason we move ourselves left, sorry, is to counteract that open face we've got. If that face is open, it's going to hit that ball straight right. So we move ourselves slightly left with our hip and our foot. With our shoulders square, we're still going to be an into square to in swing path. With that face being open and ourselves moving left, that path may well now be out to into the target. But it's still going to be into square to in compared to our path. Out to into, out to into the target, into square to into the path. The actual swing length itself is going to be a two lever swing. What I mean by that is we're going to get up to sort of about hip height. Our second lever in our wrist is going to kick in and therefore we're going to get that perfect swing length and back down to the ball. If you think of a clock face, like I said before about changing the distance, if we get to about sort of eight o'clock here with my arm, that second lever comes into play and that's where we're going to go, let's say, eight to ten yards. If I want to increase that, second lever kicks in again, my arm goes up to about nine o'clock, something like that, that ball's going to travel a little bit further. So for a shot like this, we want to make sure we're hitting this at about eight to ten yards or so. So we're going to get that second lever involved, swing back to about here with a narrow stance, ball position, body alignment, everything involved. That should pop out nice and high and fairly straight.